Let's go to the tail of the tape for this mega main event champion versus champion. Look at all those fights. Look at all those victories. Look at that reach. Doesn't matter who's taller, both the same. This is gonna be a battle. And with the official introductions for tonight's final fight, let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA from SAP Center tonight, live on DAZN. The time has come for the super fight. It is our main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Middleweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner John Carmelli, Chair, Executive Officer at Cage Side, Mr. Andy Foster. And now, first introducing the blue corner. At six foot, weighing in 184.9 pounds in his quest to hold a second world title, the reigning Bellator welterweight world champion enters the cage with 20 professional victories, four defeats. Hailing from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, presenting the challenger, Rory the Red King, McDonald. And across the cage, the champion fights out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 184.4 pounds. The three time world champion tonight makes the first defense of his Bellator title, bringing an outstanding professional record of 44 victories, six losses, and two draws. From Lederdorf, South Holland, Amsterdam, ladies and gentlemen, the defending Bellator middleweight world champion. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Herb Dean. Gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We're gonna keep it clean. Touch gloves, let's do it. Herb Dean, the referee, as gay guard Musasi and Rory McDonald get set to try to produce MMA's Mona Lisa. Two champions in their prime. It really doesn't get Ready much better Ready. than Good. this. The bell and round one. McDonald in the blue gloves. Musasi in the red gloves. What do you look forward to early on in this fight, John? I look for Rory McDonald to try to establish that jab. He's got to establish the jab to get the respect of Gegard Musasi to stand up. Well, Musasi possesses one of the best jabs in the sport. He does. Should be a highly technical affair, but Rory McDonald, who, again, a blood and guts warrior who will ever forget the rematch against Robbie Lawler for the UFC welterweight title. I thought Rory McDonald's career was finished after that fight. Boy, is he proven all of us wrong. Coming back undefeated in Bellator and already the Bellator welterweight champ. He has, Looking to make his He has rebounded so well in coming to Bellator and with the way he is fighting now is the best he has oh, fought. That is a great right, right hand by Musasi. Tag McDonald. My mind, if you're Rory, you want to do exactly what he's doing right now. Start to give him some angles, start to move around. Don't set your feet too often. If you set your feet, he's going to gauge that distance and he's going to strike. Two of the best collecting data, making adjustments on the fly, and, and the, the cage IQ off the charts for both fighters. Oh, absolutely. And Gegard is the one you look at. He is so adept at changing during the fight. That's what's so impressive about Gegard Musasi. Beautiful. Jumping jab outside low leg kick by Rory McDonald, who again representing the story TriStar Gym in Montreal. The Zero George St. Pierre, and you see similarities in their fighting approach. Perra Sahabi, one of the best trainers in his corner, and Musasi, well, has a gym on his property in the Netherlands, following the footsteps of his older brother, who was a fighter, but I remember meeting Musasi early in his career in Japan when he fought for Pride Fighting Championships and already showing signs of what to come as McDonald clocked Musasi with that right hand and Musasi didn't flinch. 
Uh, he flinched a little bit, but he, he just looked and said, like, oh, let me give you one back. But that's what Rory has to do. He has to give him something to feel to get that respect. McDonald attacking the body with a left hook. McDonald checked that kick, but then eats another stiff jab from Musasi. And another, you said it exactly, stiff. That popped his head back. He looked like a Pez dispenser. Oh, I like that line. I've heard that before somewhere. And again, Musasi beginning to establish the jab. There's a sweeping left hook. Oh, that kick was blocked. And Musasi are starting to find a rhythm, putting his strikes together under two minutes remaining in the first round. That's exactly, you're exactly right with what you're looking at. Gegard is starting to get a rhythm. Rory is not actually in a rhythm right now. He's trying to find that rhythm. He's struggling a little bit in the fight. Gegard is and a success. Man, that straight right hand the second time in this opening round that he's cracked McDonald. If you're having this kind of problem in the stand-up right now, you might want to start to change it up and make Gegard think about something else. Even a takedown attempt as far as just faking it. Make him start to move his feet and think, oh, he's thinking about that attempt. Sassi walking down McDonald, shoots the jab. McDonald tries to maybe attempt to take down, but was stopped, and that jab is just really already highly effective weapon for Musashi. That jab right now is a difference in this fight. He is controlling the distance. He's controlling exactly where that pace is at. And that's what he has to do in order to win this fight. You got it. The, the other part of that is it's not just a jab. We're talking, this is a damaging jab. It's a power jab, Manny Pacquiao, same thing. Exactly. 30 seconds left in the opening round. A good start for the Bellator MMA middleweight champion, Gegard Mousasi. But again, Roy McDonald used to taking the opening rounds, wanting to collect the data, see what Mousasi's all about. One of the things that is in the book about trying to beat Roy McDonald is make him move backwards. And that's what Gegard's doing right now. Thanks to a highly effective jab, a great start for Gegard Mousasi in this super fight. No, Rod Rory, it's very nice. I want you to go up first a little bit more, okay? okay? And I don't want you standing on the end of that jab. I want you a little bit further out, right? Just want you a little bit further out with that head moving, and then those overhands are coming to fast, brother. You hit him twice hard. Yeah. Look at this jab. Look at the head snap. That is a solid, stiff jab. Pushing Rory's face back, taking away the shots and his ability to get that nice counter. Wow. Big, stiff right hand. He's taking some hard shots early in this fight. Well, in round number two, how do you score the first fight on your unofficial scorecard, John? Well, the first, first round, round, I should say, yeah, first fight. That's a, yeah, it is their first fight, you're right. I had no doubt, 10-9. Gegard Musasi established that jab. He's the one controlling this fight right now. Rory's gonna have to change what he's doing, or things are not gonna get better for him. How does McDonald secure a path to the takedown? Because we know that despite improvements, Musasi's takedown defense isn't the best. It was evident when he fought King Mola Wall in strike force, taken down 11 times. That's when he knew, I have to work on this part of the game, and he has. He has, and he's good at wow. it. But, but if you're looking at Rory McDonald, you have to say you've got to start establishing the ability to get that takedown. Like oh, and now McDonald attempting the takedown, but it's Musasi delivering elbows, and now Musasi inside the guard of Rory McDonald. 
I talked to Gegard about Rory possibly trying to slide underneath, go to a 50-50, and Gegard said, what's a 50-50? <laughs> and you look and you go, you know, everyone knows things in different ways, but Rory will not always try the conventional takedown. He's going to try those things. And his idea is, if he's underneath Gegard, I just need to monitor the damage that I allow him to inflict. As long as, work. as, long as he knows who 50 Cent is, it's OK, though, right? <laughs> like, I, I, well, no, he's not part of that. Though. He's not <laughs> no, no, that's right. right. But he wants to uh, maintain the strap. 3.30 left in the second round. McDonald off his back. Again, the this prodigy who got interested in MMA when his dad started showing him old the UFC fights when he was 14 years of age. Really a first generation mixed Turn martial up. artist. Turned pro at the age of 16. And Ada Skiff. Sharp elbow. Couple more elbows from Musasi. Big elbows inside by Gegard. And this is when we talked about Gegard's top game. He is a damaging fighter from the top. His ground and pound is vicious. Musashi remaining active from the close. Now open guard, a close guard again of McDonald. McDonald trying to control the posture, trying to force a stand up, or maybe trying to secure a submission. He's trying to work things out. You see him opening that guard, then going back to a close, but he's trying to change the angle. He's having a hard time controlling the posture of Gago. Musasi's been submitted three times in his career, but it's all about the ground and pound. Now a wide base, and there is McDonald controlling or keeping Musasi. Look at that slice through right yep. there, right into half guard. Beautiful slice by Gigard Musasi, and he's actually trying to go down. Oh, right to full mount. Musasi has mounted Rory McDonald here in round two, and McDonald trying to hold on. See him taking his hips, bringing him up high on Rory McDonald's chest. This is a bad position wow. for Rory. Rory was mounted by Damian Maya, but Damian Maya doesn't have the strikes that Gigard Musasi has. Wow, Red Rory King. Is in trouble. And Musasi. Treating the Red King like the victors of the Red Wedding. A He's man 40 left in round two. Musashi ground and pound. Musashi maintains the Bellator MMA middleweight championship, stopping Rory McDonald. comes Rory, rolls in for that, trying to get Gegard down. He does, but in getting him down, brings himself into a position where he did not expect that he was not going to be able to stop that ground and pound. You watch Gegard slice into half guard, gets to full mount. These are heavy shots, heavy elbows. You see Rory trying to move. He cannot break that heavy hip position of Gegard Musasi. And Gegard is just launching elbows into him. Are you at all surprised at how this fight unfolded, John? No, I'm not. We talked about this, and I, and I looked at both fighters. And when I look at Gegard Musasi, he does everything that Rory McDonald does, and sometimes just a little bit better with more experience. That experience leads him to that victory. And that is the biggest reason he won tonight? I do think so. You know, it's a matter of when you have fought all of these different guys, and you've been in with the Jacarees, and you've been in with the Mark Hunts, guys that hit huge, guys that have great submission games, and you learn from those fights, like Gegard has, he has made himself an extremely impressive mixed martial artist. Musasi cementing his legacy. A champion in multiple promotions and returning to San Jose, where he became Strikeforce Light Heavyweight Champion, and now, well, in his maiden voyage as middleweight kingpin, knocks off Bellator welterweight champion Rory McDonald in highly impressive fashion. And yet again, kudos to McDonald for daring to be great. And now we'll have to see how McDonald will recover and then prepare to meet John Fitch in the Bellator welterweight Grand Prix, where McDonald's 170 pound title will be up for grabs. But tonight, it's all about Gegard Musasi, the Bellator MMA middleweight champion. Let's go to Michael C. Williams to make it official.
Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Herb Dean steps in, waves off the contest due to unanswered strikes. Official time, three minutes, 23 seconds into round number two. The winner by TKO and still Bellator middleweight world champion, Gekko Musasi. Let's go to big John McCarthy, Scott Coker, congratulating Gegard Mousasi. What a victory. John, take it away. Gegard Mousasi, congratulations on an incredibly impressive performance against an incredible fighter in Rory McDonald. Stepping up to try to take your belt. How are you feeling right now? Much respect to Rory. Um, I like him a lot. Phenomenal fighter, phenomenal guy, uh, family guy, I can say. Good things about Rory, and um, thanks for the for the, taking the fight and making this a super fight for Bellator. In the first round, you established your jab, and you started hitting him with a very stiff jab that started snapping his head back. What was the point that you knew that you had him in trouble in this fight as far as you were the one dominating the action in the fight? Well, I knew I had better stand up. I had the reach advantage. I felt like I had the speed advantage, so... The goal was to keep it stand up, make him uh, panic and go for the takedowns and take it over. Once he tried to shoot for underneath your legs, we talked about that before, that 50-50 he was scrambling for, you got position, you sliced through the half, then you sliced right over into mount. Once you got mount, did you know that you had him? I think so. I think so. I had heard him a little bit already, and um, yeah, it went perfect. This is the fight that I needed. and. Uh, I think next is Lovato, and then Mashida, if he wins. With a lot of drug testing for Mashida, and then we fight him. So you're saying that Rafael, we are Rafael Lovato Jr., who is now undefeated, he just beat John Salter. That should be your next opponent, in your opinion. I think he deserves it. I want to fight him. And then when December Mashida fights, April, I will be ready for him if he wins. But I'm not going to wait six months for Mashida. Well, all I can say is that was an incredibly impressive performance against a great champion in Rory McDonald. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Gegard Mousasi.